Miss Beasley threw open her office window. It was so hot that she gasped for air. Summer's great, she said, but only if you can go swimming. And I'm stuck in the office, worse luck. There was a knock on the door. A courier rushed in. Is this sticky situation services? He yelled. Are you the manager? Yes. Have you got an urgent message for me? You bet, said the courier. Korake school is desperate. They've got no chalk and the pet dinosaur is sick. Very sick. It's the stickiest situation I've heard of yet. Meat, said Miss Beasley. I'm off. She ran to the cupboard to get the A to Z on caring for your pets. Then she buckled on a bike helmet and ran to get a bike. It was a very hot day, but she pedalled like mad. Her rainbow coloured stockings flashed like anything. Even the buses stopped to let her go by. She swerved her bike up to the school office. Here I am, she shouted. What's the story? The principal, Gordon Gordon, was crying his eyes out and scribbling something on a writing pad. Justine Smith from room 10 ran up and gave him a handkerchief. Here you are, sir, she said, but it's the last one. Is the school running out of handkerchiefs as well as chalk? asked Miss Beasley. That's awful. Oh, Miss Beasley, it's so sad, said Justine. Poor Diplodocus the dinosaur is sick. We're so upset. All the kids are crying like Billio, and the teachers are having a cup of tea for comfort. There's no chalk to do our lessons anyway. We're even too upset to have our swimming sports. I'm a hopeless principal, sniffed Gordon Gordon, scribbling away hard. I can't even take care of the school pet. Korake School needs a new principal. I'm writing my letter of resignation. Well, one thing at a time, eh? said Miss Beasley. First, where's that dinosaur? There was a terrible rumbling noise from the back of the school. There it is, said Justine. That's Diplodocus. All the school kids watched from the windows, crying, while Justine and Gordon Gordon showed Miss Beasley round to the playing fields behind the infant block. The dinosaur was lying on its side, trying to stay in the shade of the Macrocarpa pine tree. It was groaning as if it had the biggest stomach ache in the history of the SPCA. The terrible rumbling rumbled again. Miss Beasley crept up. Gently she put her ear against the dinosaur's enormous stomach. There was a rumbling like an express train inside it. This dinosaur's got collie bobbles, said Miss Beasley. She walked all the way from its stomach up to its head. The dinosaur's little grey head was flat on the grass. Its eyes were scrunched up tight. Its nose was wrinkled. Its tongue was sticking out. The dinosaur groaned. Miss Beasley put her hand on the dinosaur's forehead. Diplodocus has got a temperature, and it's frothing at the mouth just like it's been eating chalk. We haven't got any chalk, said Gordon Gordon. Because the dinosaur did eat it, said Justine. I, I tried to tell you, sir, but you were planning for the swimming sports and so you didn't hear. Gordon Gordon wrote some more of his letter of resignation. How the heck did Diplodocus get the chalk? Miss Beasley asked. It whined and pleaded. We, we just had to give it a taste. It's very hard to stop a dinosaur from doing what it wants, said Justine Smith. And then, well, goodbye chalk. The dinosaur whimpered pathetically. Well, no wonder it's got collie wobbles, said Miss Beasley. It must be very thirsty now. All that chalk and this hot sun and nothing to drink. Where's its pet bowl? We couldn't find one big enough, said Justine. We let it lap the swimming pool. Oh, we'd better coax it to the swimming pool at once, said Miss Beasley. Come on. Gordon Gordon and Justine snapped their fingers and clapped their hands. They clicked their tongues coaxingly. They all cried, here, dippy, dippy, dip. But Diplodocus stayed right there. Pretty boy, then, called Miss Beasley. She took her rainbow-coloured stockings off and waved them in the air. Diplodocus closed its eyes even tighter. Its grey skin was wrinkled and pale. It groaned. Its stomach rumbled now and then. 
All the children watched from the classroom windows and cried and cried. The teachers watched from the staff room, drinking pots of tea for comfort. We are stumped," said Gordon. Gordon, I'm a failure. I must resign. I won't be stumped," said Miss Beasley. Surely there's a piece of chalk left, one small piece in the whole of Caracas School. Look in Sir's pocket," said Justine. Gordon Gordon searched in all his pockets, and found a tiny scrap of chalk. It was no bigger than Justine's little fingernail. "Got out," said Miss Beasley. "Let's tempt it with this. I bet that when dinosaurs really like something, they go for it, no matter how sick they are." But、uh, who will hold the chalk out?" asked Gordon Gordon. "Diplodocus is a plant-eating dinosaur." Said Miss Beasley, "You know it won't bite people." "You can hold the chalk," said Gordon. Gordon, "Let me," said Justine Smith. "I'm from Room Ten. Room Ten kids are never scared." Gordon Gordon hid his face behind his letter of resignation, while Justine took the chalk and held it under the dinosaur's nose. The nose twitched. The dinosaur opened one brown eye. Its tongue began to dribble. Now," said Miss Beasley, "walk slowly backwards." Justine walked slowly away from the dinosaur, holding out the chalk. Diplodocus stumbled to its feet. It staggered after Justine. The playing field trembled under its plod, plod, plod. Miss Beasley walked beside Diplodocus. She put a hand on its side to steady it in case it still felt weak. The children dried their eyes and started to cheer. The teachers put down their cups of tea. Diplodocus followed Justine right up to the swimming pool. "Don't let it get the chalk!" Miss Beasley shouted. "Chuck it to me!" Justine threw it as high and hard as she could. Miss Beasley caught the chalk and hid it in her blouse. The dinosaur whimpered. "Have a drink, you silly animal," Miss Beasley said kindly. If you have a drink, you'll feel much better. But Diplodocus lay down and groaned. The collie wobbles rumbled again. Give us a hand, everybody! Come and push. The children came running from the classrooms. The teachers came running out to line them up. The big kids were nearest the dinosaur's stomach and the chest, and the little kids lined up to push its tail. Everyone counted: one, two, three. Heave! But nothing happened. Put your backs and do it. One, two, three. Heave! Still, nothing happened. Then Gordon, Gordon, and Miss Beasley lined the teachers up as well, and everybody heaved. They heaved the dinosaur right into the swimming pool. Diplodocus splashed around and blew a lot of bubbles. It gulped some water down. There was an enormous thundering burp. Diplodocus smiled. "Good oh," Miss Beasley said. "It's cured. All happy now, eh?" But Gordon Gordon said, "What about our swimming sports? How can Koraki School have swimming sports with Dippy in the pool? There's hardly any room." I have to resign after all. The children began to cry again. The teachers started back to the staff room for the teapot. Justine and Miss Beasley looked at each other and shook their heads. Another sticky situation," said Justine. "Ah,、yeah, this one's easy," said Miss Beasley. "Gordon, Gordon, of course you can have your sports. What about diving competitions from the top of Dippy's head?" And from the tip of Dippy's tail," cried the principal. He crumpled up the letter of resignation. The children asked Miss Beasley if she'd stay and be the judge. "Too right," she said, and stuffed a rainbow-coloured stockings in her pocket. The dinosaur loved helping with the diving. It chuckled and splashed and gave little squeaks of happiness. The sports were a real success. Room ten did best in the team event. Justine Smith won the triple somersault as well as the best swallow dive. Gordon Gordon said the dinosaur should have won the prize, 
for the biggest swallow of the swimming pool 